This video is going to be a little different. Obviously, as you could tell by the the title, it's been a rough year. And I'm not talking about from January to now. I'm talking about from last year, March 31st to today. It's been a full year. And I think I can talk about this now uh, since it has happened a year ago. And that is the death of my uncle. And he is the first death of someone that has been close to me, family-wise. And I hate saying this, but it's... I didn't think it would happen to me. And I know that's a horrible way to think, because death can happen at any time, and it happens to everyone. And for anyone that is feeling kind of like I did, or has been in a situation like I have been, I want you guys to know that you're not alone. I completely understand, because this isn't easy. It's not easy to talk about, but I do this solely because I want to share with you guys something that someone else could also be feeling and can relate to. Um, but before I... I get to my main point about all this. I want to share a little bit of backstory about me and my uncle. My uncle is, well, was, um, he was a very great man. He was a very humble man. And he, he had issues. He liked to drink. He, he wasn't very good at keeping jobs. He wasn't born in the U.S. Uh, he was born in his home country. And he was a person that was very joyful. Um, his laugh was contagious. And he was a very important part of my younger years when I was a toddler. I was very close to him. Beside my mom and my dad, my uncle, whose name is the same as mine, actually we were best buds almost because he would take me out in a diaper and we would go walking because he didn't have a driver's license. He didn't have a car. He'd take me to, uh, if you guys were from up north like Jersey and like New York and all that, you guys will know what I'm talking about when I say uh, the shop right, which is kind of like the food lion uh, here in the south, or Walmart. Well, there was Walmart's up north, obviously, but that was like the grocery store, the shop right. He would take me there in just a diaper, and he would do that and make my mom angry. Uh, sometimes he would just, you know, just take me out and have fun with me, and. Those were great times, great memories. However, he went back to his country um, right around when I was three or four, I believe. And he didn't come back until later, uh, maybe I want to say about 10 plus years. He came back and he and I weren't close anymore. I was closer to my other uncle and my other family and, you know, friends but it was different, and unfortunately, I didn't get to spend as much time as I should have with him, but he was a very great person, and on the night of his death, weirdly enough, um, my family and we were all gathered together except for him, and we were all gathered not because it was what we wanted because till today I don't really have a relationship with my family and I don't know if I'll get to talk to that about that to talk to you guys about that in this video because that's a different topic for a different time I think um, but today I just want to talk about him and what he meant and what he still means to me uh, to lose him to lose a friend, to lose an uncle. Uh, I miss the man. He 
like I said, was very important in my in my youth and growing up. Um, it was funny how sometimes I would laugh like him, and I would remember that laugh um, because my my parents and would remind me, and other family members would remind me too about how I sounded like him when I laughed, and to some degree his voice, uh, and it was. It was sad because when we were all there, my family, on the night that he died, he was the only one not there. Like I said, he was actually on his way to go to work. Uh, he worked at a uh, Waffle House. For those that don't know, it's it's like a Denny's. It's like an IHOP uh, and or a diner, if you would like to go with that word. And he was hit by a drunk driver. And... For me, drunk driving is the worst thing ever. It's worse than being high. It's worse than being on drugs uh, of any sort. But drunk driving. Uh, and here's the messed up part. Uh, my uncle was a drunk himself. But he didn't drive. Even even at this time. I mean, he didn't have his papers. He was, he was illegal. Uh, for those that don't know. He was illegal, and so he couldn't have that. And so he walked to his job, and he made it through. You know, he normally he'd walk on the street, and there was no one there. And this person hit him anyway. He came out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere, and hit him. And my wife was working when all this was happening. Uh, and she worked at the hospital that he was uh, being a. T I guess attended to. He he was dead on arrival, and since he didn't have papers, he went by the name of John Doe. And she wasn't the one that attended to him; it was a friend of hers. And she had found out afterwards by me what had happened, like who it was, because she had never met him. And I, till this day, I will continue to have that regret of never introducing her to my uncle. And it's very sad because she had met everyone except for him. And when she actually saw him, uh, it was at his funeral. And it was very tough for me because uh, after that night of his funeral, I found out the next day after being at work. And... I had just gotten to bed when I heard about it. And that night I didn't go to work. In fact, I didn't even make it public to anyone, uh, either at work or my friends, that my uncle had died. Except for a few people, you know, other than my family that knew. And during that time period last year, I was still grinding hard on YouTube. And I still am. I make sure that I post every day. And during that time, I still did. I didn't want anyone to know about it. I didn't really want to talk about it. But when I was off the mic, off recording, not at work, not doing anything, the memory would come back of my uncle. And he, he definitely uh, was a very important impact in my life he meant so much to me and I hated and I will always have the regret of not being able to have been able to spend more time with him because the people that we love aren't always going to be around and so though I wish things were a little more ideal they're not and I care for my family the funeral was frustrating uh, because we were all gathered there and there were other people there, the people that didn't know him that were invited by my mother, uh, people from her church. And I was heavily involved in my church before and I am no longer affiliated with them. And I'm not going to 
diss anyone's religion, anyone's belief, because that's not, that's not my fundamentals, that's not what I'm about, and it was frustrating because those people that were there were very disrespectful to him and to us. They didn't see it that way, of course. And I didn't want to start an argument. But it was it was really what felt like should have been a time of reflection and happy moments was honestly filled with tears, sadness, and frustration. At least to me. And after the funeral, me and my wife... Um, had we left um and I cried I cried in the car because it was so it was sad because he he wouldn't have wanted that if we were going to remember him he would have wanted us to remember him in a good way but it wasn't like that and I'm and I wish things had been different while he was alive because he had a lot of personal problems. Uh, and, you know, everyone does. And no one's perfect. But I wish that as a family, because as Hispanic, we Hispanics are big on family. And I know other cultures are too. But I can only speak for the Hispanic culture. But for like for my family, because of differences, both religious differences, personal beliefs and lifestyles, we we all drifted. And I wish things weren't like that. And like I said, I'm not going to talk about all that in this video. In fact, I may make a separate video about my family situation currently and how things are, if anyone wants to know, I mean, I don't have to say to anyone, uh, but I, looking back now a year, so much has passed, so much has happened, I've been to Spain, I've got married, and during my wedding, we had reserved a seat for him, and I know that in spirit, he was there. And for anyone that goes through something like this, guys, I want you to know you're not alone. It's it's rough. Family is important. Friends are too. But we always got to look forward to, to happier moments, not just sad. But I don't want to ramble anymore. Take care of yourselves and others. Okay.